What's up guys, Brad here from Piney Grove, and today we've got an exciting product to bring you. We've partnered with Cutlass Blades and they have created this blade for us for our finish mower. Now you've probably seen blades like this before. There's a company out there called Megmo, but this blade was custom made for a finish mower and you see these used mainly on zero turns. So I believe this is gonna be the first time that you'll see this style blade used on a finish mower. Now I'm gonna have Deb jump on the tractor and cut a couple swaths of this grass with regular finish mower blades and then we're gonna put these on and compare the two cuts. But as we look at this blade here, you'll see it's very unique. It's got four cutting edges instead of two and these edges actually swing away. So if you hit a rock or you hit a stump or a stick, these will swing away rather than staying rigid and damaging the blade. So we do so much mowing out here at Piney Grove. What we're very interested in is how long that we can cut with these blades before they need sharpening. Right now, when we cut about five acres of our Bahia grass out here, we have to resharpen our traditional mower blades, which are John Deere blades that we bought directly from the dealer. So our hope is number one, that we don't have to sharpen these as, as often. And then also these swing away blades also detach very quickly from this centerpiece so this stays on your mower and then you pull your blades off and sharpen them separately or if they get damaged for eight dollars you just replace one of these blades we'll show you how all that works later but for now deb's going to jump on the kubota and get this comparison strip going So what will be very interesting to compare is how those traditional blades handle all of this uh, thatch in the new grass compared to the cutlass blades. So we can make some assumptions based on what we find out here today, but stay tuned to our channel because long-term is what we're interested in. And we'll continue to provide updates on these blades as we cut more and more out here at Piney Grove. So these blades are removable so you can sharpen them and also replace them and what you do is rotate them this way so they go against this tab. All right, so I'm going to take the blade and push it in against that silver stop right there and this hole will line up with that bolt and it should come right off. And that's your blade and these are about eight or nine dollars to replace. So now we'll show you how to put it back on. Again, you put this angled part down, try to line up that hole with that bolt right there. Once you get it over top, you push down to depress that little tang. And the blade's back on. With a little bit of practice, that should be real easy to do. And also these are brand new, so as they wear a little bit, it'll be easier to take them off when they're under the mower. But now let's go under the mower, take off the traditional blades, put these on and see how they cut. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is take off these traditional blades. One thing that we found with these cutlass blades is that they're a different thickness than the John Deere blades. So we actually have to put some shims on the spindle to hold the blade, um, to hold the blade out a little bit so that the bolt will tighten up properly. Now cutlass will make you some custom uh, shims, but you can also buy them on Amazon. We'll put a link down below of the shims that we use, but here's one of them and this one's probably too thick. What you want is enough of that existing spindle hanging down uh, so there's enough lip for these new blades to ride on. That leaves me plenty of room to put the blade on. And we'll put the bolt in. So I got my blades extended out. They're not going to hit any of the guards or the um, whatever you call these shoots inside of a mower. All right, so we'll tighten it up and this blade will be on. All right, let's do the other one. So to show the difference in the traditional blade, now this is a, a fairly new blade. We just bought it this season. We've mowed 
probably 15 acres with it and sharpened it three times. But the thickness of this blade is thicker than this right here. And that's why we had to shim out our spindle because the bolt wouldn't tighten uh, with the land that was on the spindle was longer. But with those shims, it tightened up fine. We've got the first blade on. We're gonna go ahead and put on the other two blades. You don't need to see that. And then we will go back into the pasture and we'll have Deb do some more mowing and compare the two mowing strips. So this is what we're talking about with the spindle fitment. This land right here sticks out too far and the blade is too thin and the bolt hits this land before it hits the blade. So we got, these are the spacers we got. So when I put the spacer here, there's less land showing. And now I'm gonna put the blade up. And now the bolt can tighten that without bottoming out on the land of the spindle. There's no clearance issues there. And of course there's no clearance issues tip to tip. All right, she's gonna engage the PTO and see what, if it makes any noise. No problem so far. She's gonna go up to 540 RPM and mow a couple strips for us to compare to. It's the same exact pasture, just being mowed a couple hours different. You see big old piles of thatch here with the traditional blades and over here, it looks like the thatch piles are less. This is what I'm talking about. If I go over here, I got big old piles of thatch. And then over here where she just mowed, I have the green clippings and also the thatch that's here from old clippings and they're just ground up a lot more. So we'll let her come back down on her other pass and then we'll have two um, six foot, we'll have 12 foot on one side, 12 foot on the other side and we should be able to clearly see if there's a difference. I mean, to me, there's a clear difference. There's way less thatch on this side than there is on this side, and this is the exact same pasture. She's doing the same speed, same RPMs on the tractor. Everything's the same, except the blades are different. Okay, so first impression, very first impression, two minutes into this test, totally impressed with the cutlass blades as far as how they're cutting and how they're mulching. What we won't know is longevity from this test. So I recorded that at startup and I didn't hear any belt slipping and those blades are a lot heavier. You saw there's a lot more metal there, but um, Brian told me they're, they're balanced and he hasn't heard of any spindle issues. She engaged the PTO at a very low RPM and then she sped the tractor up once the PTO was engaged. So that's something that I think I would be sure to do if I use these heavier blades. Now I don't hear any sound difference, like the mower is not making more or less noise with these blades. Again, traditional blades and the 12 feet behind her right now with the cutlass blades. And there's a lot of thatch there, but it's way less than over here. So we can get a side-by-side -side comparison. I told her to take a loop and do six feet on the other side of where she did earlier. By doing that, then we'll be sure that maybe there wasn't a grass difference. So then we'll have cutlass blades on both sides of the traditional blades. But you can see the thatch is like windrowed with the traditional blades. And over here with the cutlass blades, it is spread out. And with that thatch being spread out, that's what we want for it to break down and enrich the soil. It'll break down a lot easier if it's cut up into smaller bits. And that's what it looks like it's doing. She's in some thick grass now. Let's go check that out. All right, it's clumping a little bit. So the most dramatic difference was on her very first pass going away here. And there's no way the blades got dull by, the, by that end and when she turned around and came back this way. There's definitely a difference in the blades for sure. And once she's done here, we will go up to the mega shed and we'll look up underneath there and we'll check out those blades. They had a factory edge to them, which is a nice sharp edge, but not like sharp to the touch. It's not like a razor edge. And we'll be able to see if they started to round at all. You wouldn't think so, this is clean grass, but that's all part of this comparison. I keep saying it, but that's why we're here comparing. That's where she just went down, and this is where she went down with the traditional blade. Try and get some handfuls of this that she just cut and just see if they're smaller, cut up more. I mean, they're pretty small bits. And now let's go over to where it was clumping from the John Deere blades and see if they're maybe a little longer. This is not scientific, I'm not measuring and these have had an hour or so to dry. 
but this thatch is is longer it's it's not cut up as finely as that thatch over there so those four blades per spindle as opposed to two cutting edges per spindle are definitely chopping up and mulching a lot more so far i think uh, they work very well okay that's what we mowed Okay, how'd it feel from the seat of the tractor as far as the different mower blades? Could you tell a difference? I felt like I could actually tell a difference. It felt smoother once I started with these new cutlass blades. And, it, and maybe it was just me, but it seemed like it was quieter. How did it look from the tractor seat? Did it look more, more uh, fine clippings? It did look more fine. When I look back on it, it looked more, it reminded me of a mowed lawn versus a mowed pasture. So I felt like it had a little fine tuner, finer of a cut than the traditional blades. All right, guys, I'm gonna try and pull off one of these blades for you so we can look at them. All right, let's see what we got. So I'm looking at this blade that just cut about an acre and I see that the black paint is definitely off of the blade and the edge is still very sharp. There is a very minute amount of curling, but this blade is still very sharp. Hopefully the camera picks it up, but that's what a cutlass blade looks like after doing about an acre. So as this blade wears down from being sharpened, remember you can always just replace the blade tips rather than replacing that whole center metal piece. Here's one last look at the mode area that we did with the cutlass blades and the traditional blades. And so far we're impressed, but we don't have any long-term data to see if these are the ultimate solution for us out here. We'll leave a link down below and also a coupon code that'll get you a discount if you're interested in a set of blades. But until next time, y'all take care out there. And remember, life's short, tractor hard.